Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step process to effectively handle your listing presentations so you can walk away with a signed listing agreement. The first thing I want you to write down is this. When a seller agrees to meet with you, they give you an appointment to, list the, to talk about listing the house. They are a yes trust me they are a yes unless you show up and you do something weird and you turn them into a no if you follow what i'm going to tell you here today you will keep them as a yes and you'll get a listing sign and that will be it so write this down sellers are looking for the answer to this question at a listing appointment and the their question is do i feel like this agent can sell my home for the most money possible in the least amount of time and with the least amount of hassle that's it everything you do everything you say that they're processing thinking do I believe this is the right person to do this for me? Do I trust them? Is this the agent that can sell it for the most money in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle? So step by step, I believe there are eight steps. So here's step number one. When you show up to a listing appointment, you have to use an effective script. There are four parts to a listing presentation my listing presentation the one that i teach my clients a sales x training four parts part number one confirm their motivation to sell motivation is where are they moving to when do they want to get there and why are they moving it's where when and why part number two is you're gonna share with them your marketing plan what are you going to do to sell the house and believe me with a marketing plan you cannot sound like every other agent well i i put it on hundreds of websites i'm gonna put it in the mls i'm gonna do an open house i'll put a sign for i'll get professional photos that's what everybody does you could do all of that too but somehow you gotta share with them what you do differently i'm gonna cover that step in just a little bit okay Step number four, uh, three on your presentation is the price, is having a conversation about the price. I'm gonna talk to you about how to prepare a CMA in, in just a minute as well. And then the fourth, last part of your presentation is ask them to sign the contract. So that's it, those are the four parts. There's an effective script for you to use. And you don't really have an option. You have to use a script because if you don't, you're going to be making things up as you go. And if you've been in real estate for a little while and you've been on some listing appointments where you made things up as you go, I think you know how that turns out. Not very well. Model someone that has done it effectively. Not only have I done it very effectively because I listed 150 fizzbles a year for several years in an incredibly competitive market, but I currently coach hundreds of agents that are using my script and taking listings every day. So why would you make things up as you go or use some other crazy script out there that doesn't even make sense to you? So model an effective script. And remember, the issue is not a script because I hear so many agents say, well, I don't like scripts. No. What you don't like is sounding scripted because agents say, well, this script doesn't sound like me. Of course not. If you've never used it, how do you expect something new to sound like you? You practice and repetition is the mother of skill. The more you practice, the more conversational you're able to deliver the script. And then all of a sudden it starts sounding like you and you'll be very effective. Step number two, you must pre-qualify your appointments again use an effective script learn practice to deliver it in a conversational manner pre-qualifying is critical the, the goal here is to walk away from this appointment with a signed listing agreement if you don't pre-qualify 
you're walking into a situation that you have no idea, you don't know what their questions are, what their objections are, what their concerns are. You're, you don't know if they're interviewing other agents, who they're interviewing, if all, all the owners are gonna be there. You're just walking in blindly. And trust me, if you don't pre-qualify thoroughly, you will be blindsided. And it's not likely that you're gonna take the listing. The purpose of pre-qualifying, in addition to obviously answering all the questions that I just mentioned to you, is finding out more about their motivation and financial situation. That's also critical when you're pre-qualified. Here's step number three. You have to prepare an accurate and concise market analysis. And I say concise because you don't want like pages and pages of information because that it went when there's too much information it creates confusion people get lost with all a bunch of information and they don't make decisions accurate you need to learn how to find comparables that make sense a great way for you to learn how to do that is sit down with an appraiser look at an appraisal ask them how they find comparables because that's exactly what you're supposed to do you you need to think like an appraiser their job is to tell the lender what the value of this home is it's the same thing you need to help the seller understand the value of this home so you need to accurately select comparables that make sense if the comparables you're choosing are not exactly like the subject property and very often they're not appraisers make adjustments for the differences and you need to learn how to do that and learning how an appraiser thinks one of the best ways to do that so find an appraiser invite them to lunch pick their brain learn Take a few different appraisals, study them, and make it short and sweet so you can have a powerful conversation and help the seller understand the price. Point number four is, and this is critical, as you walk into every listing appointment, always assume that they're listing with you because ultimately, you know, I, I always say to my clients, mindset is everything. If you walk in thinking they're not going to list with you for whatever reason, I don't care if they told you over the phone, well, I'm not listing, because sometimes they say that, right? And, and that's part of the pre-qualifying. But if, you walk in, if you're walking in thinking they're not going to list with me, well, that's going to affect how you present, what you say, how you behave, and it's going to determine whether or not you take this listing. So always assume the sale. Remember, this is a famous quote. I love it. Whether you think you can or you think you can't. Either way, you're right. So decide before you even walk in that you're taking this listing and you're not walking out of the house without their signature. Step number five, remember that motivated sellers motivated seller they want to sell their house if they didn't want to sell their house you wouldn't be there okay i don't care what they say oh, i'm not in a hurry if i don't sell our rent you wouldn't be meeting with them if they didn't want to sell motivated sellers are looking for a knowledgeable professional confident and aggressive agent write down those four words that is what they're looking for they're not looking for Oh, so what do you think? You know, oh my gosh, you have a dog, I have a dog. Oh, I love this too. They're not looking for a friend. They're looking for a professional that's confident, that makes them feel confident that they can sell this house for the most money in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle. You need to show up that way. Oh, but I, you know, I, I, I haven't been on listing appointments. I'm new to real estate. I don't have the confidence and I'm not knowledgeable. Get the knowledge you need as soon as possible. Fake it till you make it. Act as if you were. I was brand new to real estate at some point too. I had no idea what I was doing. 
And obviously I wasn't as good as I was in the beginning as I turned out to be a few years later. We get better and better every day, but you gotta do your very best. You cannot show up like, well, you know, like scared, wishy-washy. Then you have no chance. So you gotta act confidently, like as if you were an actor or an actress and you're playing the part of a confident, knowledgeable, professional real estate agent. That's it. That's what you need to do. Point number six, you got to show up energetic, enthusiastic with passion for what you do, because this in and of itself, if you feel like, well, I don't have the skills and I lack in this area, when you're energetic and enthusiastic, that makes up for a lack of skills and it's contagious. People want to do business with people that are passionate and excited. They're going to make the decision to hire you because they're excited about the possibility of what you can do for them. Now, if you're not excited and full of energy, how are, how are, they, how are you going to get them excited about listening with you? It's not going to happen. Point number seven, this is one of the most important things on your listing presentation. And it's step number three the, of the, or excuse me, part number three. In the beginning, I gave you the four parts. Part number uh, three or two, excuse me. Part number two is your marketing plan. Number one, part one is confirm the motivation. Two is the marketing plan. Three is price. Four is getting the signature. So part number two, your marketing plan. The most important thing you need to do is talk to them about what you do differently because they are not going to hire another agent to do the same thing and expect that this time the house is going to sell. So what is it that you do differently? If you are doing what I tell you to do, you're an active and aggressive agent. You're prospecting every day. You're speaking to 40 or 50 people a day about buying and selling real estate. You're asking everyone you speak with, even if it's an expired or for sale by owner, everyone you speak with, even if you don't set an appointment. Can you think of anyone that's looking to buy or sell a home anywhere in our area that I can help? That is your job. Now, there are other things you do as an active agent. To me, this is the most important thing that other agents don't do. All they do is passive stuff. You could do the passive stuff too. Now, just because you're an active agent and you're prospecting every day, does that mean that you're going to sell their house and you're going to find the buyer because of some of the people that you're talking to and the cross selling that you do? No. Not necessarily. I actually used to say this to sellers on, on listing appointments. When I talked about what I do in the prospecting and I'm talking to people every day, that's what separates me from 99.9% .9 of the agents out there. I would say to them, and Mr. Seller, let me share this with you. Even though I talk to this many people every day, does that mean that I will be the agent to sell your house? Unfortunately, not necessarily because I am one Jackie and there are 10,000 agents right here in our area and there's millions of agents nationwide and your buyer could be coming from anywhere. So I can't promise you that I will be the one to bring in the buyer. What I can promise you is this, Mr. Seller, when you hire me today, my job is to find the buyer for your property. And I'm going to work at that every single day. I'm not just going to sit around, throw it in the multiple listing on hundreds of websites and wait for the buyer to find me. I'm out there talking to people every day, looking for buyers for the properties that I list. And that's what you would expect an agent to do for you, isn't it? In a nutshell, that's the dialogue. That's part number seven. It is critically important. And the last step is ask them to sign the contract. Have you ever been on a listing appointment and you did whatever presentation you're doing and at the end you don't ask them to sign for whatever reason? You know, sometimes sellers will even say, you, come, you can come tell me what you do, but I'm not going to list. So 
Remember I said, you got to always assume the sale. You believe what they're saying, that they're not going to list. So then you don't even ask for the signature. If you don't ask, the answer will always be no. And remember, 80% of the yeses happen after asking five times. So asking once is not enough. If you ask once and they don't sign, they give you an objection. You got to handle that objection and ask again. Now, I will say this. When you do your job correctly, you follow what I have given you here and you do an amazing presentation, they're likely to sign the first time you ask. It's not complicated. When you do a great job, they're ready to go. But if you happen to get an objection, you need to handle it and ask for the signature again. And I want to close with this quote for you. Luck happens when preparation meets opportunity. When you walk through that door, you have an opportunity. They're a yes. And for you to get lucky on this appointment and actually get the listing, the more prepared you are, the better your chances of taking this listing. I trust that this was helpful for you. Make sure you like the video. Put your comments and questions below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I will see you on the next video.